Let's let's Praise God, praise God, praise God. I tell you, trying to do this noonday broadcast is a challenge. Hello, hello. Thank you for joining. What I do on my seven minute read is I read seven minutes every day, so you do not have to read. Welcome, welcome. I read seven minutes every day, so you don't have to read. Currently reading, understanding the purpose and power of men. The Purpose and Power of Men by Dr. Miles Monroe. And what God has mandated me to do on my Periscope read is to fight for the body of Christ, fight for marriages in the body of Christ, fighting for marriages. Marriages are under attack, and when the marriages are broken up, then everything else is messed up also. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we do come before you right now, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you for another opportunity to come before the throne of grace, Lord, fighting for marriages. Lord, we are currently learning, us wives, reading to try to learn to understand our men. And then, Lord, we ask for the men that come by here to listen and be attentive so that they can see if, in fact, they are functioning as they should be functioning. Lord, our world is in need of you. We are in need of more of you. So, Lord, in my small little way, reading seven minutes every day, Lord Jesus, open up the ears of the hearers. Give them ears to hear and hearts to receive what is being said from this book that you bless, Dr. Miles Monroe, to place in our hands. Kingdom living, kingdom marriages. So we do give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise, and we call it done. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Okay, so we are reading page 79, starting on chapter 4, God's Purpose for the Male. God designed and equipped the male to carry out every purpose and function he has been given. Thank you for the hearts. Many men are still wondering why they exist. Yet the creator of man did not leave us guessing about who the male is supposed to be and what he is designed to do. In this chapter, we are going to explore God's original intentions for men so that there's no more worry, no more guessing as to their reason for being. We turn again to Proverbs 19 and 21 for the vital truth. Many of the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. Many are our opinions of what man should be, but the Lord's purpose is the only one that counts. And this purpose is the key to our fulfillment. What we will be looking at as is the models. What we will be looking at is the male's ideal purpose. There's That is not where we are right now. That is not where we are right now. Yet God's idea is what we should be moving toward. And by his grace, we will. The creation of the male man. We first need to remem remember that God creates according to the requirements of his purposes. In the previous chapters, we learned that God desired to dominate and influence the planet through mankind. And so he created man, the spirit, in his image and then placed the man in two physical houses. And he called those houses male and female. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Genesis 1 and 27. I would like to point out here that since the spirit man dwells in both male and female, we may refer to the male as a male man. Hello, and thank you for joining. And to the female as a female man. This will remind us that men and women are both man. The distinction, rather than the distinctions between men and women are physical and functional, rather than of their essence. The purpose of man, the spirit, and the purpose of the male are two different things, although they are related. Man was created in God's image for the purposes we discussed in the previous chapter. Male was made to serve the needs of man on earth and to enable him to fulfill his purpose. Genesis 2 gives us a more detailed explanation of the manner in which God made male and female. First, he formed the male. The Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Genesis 2 and 7. The male 
interlude of time before the female was... Okay, let me go back. The male was made first and there was an interlude of time before the female was made. There is much we can learn about God's purpose for the male by what the male saw, heard, and learned during this interlude. Remember that the purpose of something determines its nature, its design, and its features. This means that the nature, design, and qualities of males were decided upon by God and created by Him according to what He determined was best for the sake of His purpose. Amen. Praise God. Elements of the male's purpose. The purpose of the male may be summed up as his priority, his position, and his assignment. Priority refers to the man's order in creation and what this means in regard to his reason for being. Position refers to the environment and place in which the man is to carry out his purpose. Assignment means the functions or tasks that the man has been given. Praise God. Okay, we're going to read one more page, and that should be about our seven minutes, a little bit more. So number one, we're going to read about male's priority. The order in which the male was created gives the first indication of his reason for being. Why did God make the male first? It was not because the male was better, but because of his purpose. When you think about it, God really made only one human being. When he created the female, he didn't go back to the soil, but he fashioned her from the side of the man. See Genesis 2, 21 and 23. Only the male came directly from the earth. This was because the male was designed by God to be the foundation of the human family. The woman came out of the man rather than the earth because she was designed to rest on the man, to have the male as her support. I believe that the foundation of society, the infrastructure God intended for this world, has been misunderstood. We often say that the family is the foundation of society. It is very true that the family is the adhesive that holds it together. Yet God did not start to build earthly society with a family. He began it with one person. He began it with male man. Thank you for the hearts. Remember, our discussion of the principles of purpose in chapter 2. Because God is a God of purpose, he planned everything before he began to create. So that when he staged digging the when he started digging the foundation, he knew exactly what he wanted and what the completed picture would be like. But he had to start with the foundation. Have you ever seen a contractor build a house starting with the roof? Have you ever seen a guy walk? Yes, M-A-L-E man, not the M-A-I-L man. Thank you. Have you ever seen a con contractor build a house starting with the roof? Have you ever seen a guy walk into an empty lot and hold up a window in the air trying to get it to stay? You don't start with the windows. You don't start with the roof. You don't start with the mm -hmm. rafters. And likewise, God starts like any other builder. The priority in building is always what you need to do first. You start with the mm -hmm. foundation. Woo, praise God, praise God. So we have read up to page 73, and I'm sure that's more than seven minutes for today. What a blessing, what a blessing, what a blessing. And we are reading this book by our beloved uh, Dr. Miles Monroe, Understanding the Purpose and Power of Men. Daughters, in order for us to be the best wives that we can be, we got to understand our brothers. we got to understand our men. Praise God. And then my, my prayer and my desire is that as men listen to this, oh, no problem, sweetie, no problem. Praise God. And um, as I read these reads, I pray that the men out there that are watching, watching the replay or watching it as it plays, that you'll do an assessment over yourself and see if if you are the true male, M-A-L-E, are you the true male man 
that God has called you to be. So that when you do deliver the M-A-I-L to us women, then it's all good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Praise God. I'm glad you, I'm glad. It's a wonderful read. I am enjoying it. I've had it for a minute. Haven't been able to read it, but I'm reading it. Now, seven minutes a day. I've read thus far three books, reading seven minutes a day. This is my fourth read here on Periscope um, since I started doing the seven-minute read. It's just God is showing me how much you can do in seven minutes. Uh, Many of us don't read our Bible because we feel we got to set aside a special time. I got to get real spiritual, got to get real deep, and I got to put 30 minutes to an hour so we never do anything, right? (laughs) Praise God. Well, God is showing me just seven minutes. If you just give them five uninterrupted minutes, you're, you're reading. And you could read your whole Bible, technically, if you just give God seven minutes or anything else that you want to do. I will say that it's most challenging to just come here every day around the noon hour, seven powerful minutes. Yes, seven powerful minutes. Uh, just trying to get the seven minutes just to get to the seat, to the place where I can do what God has asked me to do, which is just read for seven minutes. My God, tw- 24 hours in a day. And all he is asking me for is seven minutes, and it's so challenging. I got the wife, I got the kids, I got, oh, I got all kind of things going on. I am called Mama Pam to the world. Many people call me Mama Pam. I'm your mom if you want me to be, and I'm your mom if you don't want me to be. Praise God. <laughs> yes, the enemy fights us when we're trying to do something for God. Uh, my name is Pamela Dobson, and you can look at the previous reads. I try to put all of them up every day or every couple days because as soon as I get off this periscope I'm running. My husband is waiting for me to take him somewhere and I got to drive him around, run him around, then we're going to church at night, then we start off tomorrow, driving him to work, to job. It's just crazy. But anyway, I do eventually get them posted to YouTube under the name Pamela Dobson. So if you want to look at some of the uh, repeat, the previous uh, reads that we've done on this book and then other books I um, read Understanding the Purpose and Power of Love and Marriage. Another, oh, that's the one I just read. Another powerful one. Look at some of the reviews. And then on Facebook, I have a seven-minute read page connected to my page, which is SEV number seven-minute read. And I try to keep that one every day posted with, with the reads. It's been a blessing to me and a blessing to many others. I hear people telling me that it's really, really been blessing them. And so I say, okay, Lord, until you tell me to stop, I'm going to be faithful. I'm going to be faithful until you tell me to stop. So I thank you, my daughter, for coming by. And what is your name, sweetie? Praise God. Miss Rita. Well, praise God. Thank God for you, Miss Rita. And where are you located, if you don't mind saying? I'm in Sacramento, California. I'm in sunny. It's warm in California. Got the air on, and it's still warm. Illinois. Okay, praise God. My mother was... um, Raised in Ohio. My mother comes from Ohio back that way. Bless her bless her heart. She's no longer here, but she is, was from Ohio. Never been to Illinois. Praise God. You'll be to Sacramento in October? California. Praise God for a visit. Family visit. California is beautiful. I love California. I don't know, honey. You know, he said he wasn't, um, he was not going to destroy the earth with, earth with water again back in Louisiana. But he did say fire. And I, honey, it's California. Like, it's about to burn down. I'm like, Lord, I'm praying. You ain't going to take me up in the fire issue. But if it, if it comes, I'm ready. I'm ready. I don't want to leave here. I'm 65. And I plan on living to be 120 based upon Genesis 6 and 3. I can live to be 120. Yes, I can live be 120. So I'm not ready to leave here, but if God says so, because this fire is everywhere. No fires here where I live in this part of California, Sacramento. Uh, San Bernardino is about mm, about 400 miles away, I guess, where all the big, the majority of the fires are. And so we pray for them and we hold them up and it looks terrible. And then Louisiana, where the flooding, it's just, it's like, wow. It's like, Father God, on one part of the, uh, of America, United States, we got floodings, we need the water, and then on this end we got the fire, we need the water to put out the fire, but then God is upset with America, he's upset with us, some of these laws and things that we have been making and, and setting in, in order are not of God, and God is our creator, he is our father, and so his vengeance, his wrath, I mean, he's a just and a good father, but just 
like us as parents, we allow our children to get away with something a long time. We, we love them babies. And then we got to spank, spank. Then we got to discipline. Then we got to do something to correct them. Hallelujah. Praise God, Sister Rita. There's no safer place than under the arms of the Almighty, abiding under the shadow of the Almighty, under His wings. Hallelujah. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So we don't have to worry about the plague, plague by day or the, or the snare that comes by night. We don't have to worry about none of that if we're hidden in Him. If we are hidden in Him. And I am. And you are. So praise God. Praise God. See, we have church right now here on Periscope. Praise the Lord. Just you and me. And it's all good. <laughs> praise God. Yeah. So the safest place in the whole wide world is with the Lord today. My um, four. I, I was just th thinking and, and, and praising God this morning. I have 14 grandchildren. I have 12 grandsons and two granddaughters. And four. The last four entered school today. The girl is um, 16. She's in high school. And then my second, I only have two granddaughters and 12 grandsons. So my two granddaughters, one is in high school and the other one is 12. Thank you. Praise God. And the other one is 12. And then the two little knee babies, I call them knee babies because they're um, six and seven. And my daughter who has the 12 year old granddaughter to the six and seven. And then she's a grandmother. She has a son 23 and a son 21, and he's got a baby. So my daughter got the little knee babies, plus she got, she's a grandma. She don't look it, though. She don't, you know, we don't, what today, we don't crack or whatever the case may be. <laughs> yeah. So it is. Yeah, I have the tri 12 tribes of Israel. God bless me with them. 12 grandsons. Yes, ma'am. 12 grandsons. I'm very, very blessed. And um, I said 12 grandsons, and I have six great grand. Six great grandchildren. It's like how, Lord, I'm too, I'm, I'm too young for all that. <laughs> I'm 65, but I feel like I'm about 40, maybe 40. That's what I feel. That's what I feel. Um, but I've served God all my life. I've never drank, never drugged. I got married. Praise God. Oh, I, I can see your little picture. You're beautiful in the little picture there. Praise God. And it just gets better, daughter. Oh my God, this life just gets so much better. The older we get, because we don't worry about the those that's in God. I, I could care less about these wrinkles. Now, I do put a little something, something on the hair. This is not my true hair. It's my true hair, but it's not the hair color. But see, 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 they go to color right there. See, 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 they go to color. Look gray, look gray. So if I let it all off, it'd be a whole lot gray. And I love gray hair. I love it when I see other women and the beautiful gray hair. But I ain't mature to that place yet. So pray for me, daughter. Pray for me. I ain't ready for the grade. Not like all that shit. <laughs> so I kind of rinse it. But I honor it. And I love it. And I thank God for it. Because guess what? Many people have not lived to see their graves. They're gone. They're dying every day. They, you know, they're leaving here every day. And, and, and pray for our men too. Pray for the pray. The men. The men. Not knocking any of the other men, but in particular, pray for our black men as they are. I tell you, it's it's terrible what's going on. And I got these grandsons, and I pray mightily. I pray every time, and you hear the news, and I just pray for mine. I Because I, there's nothing to exempt mine from something happening except the blood of Jesus. And the prayer of a righteous man, and we have already... Yes, for our black men. And we have already learned that when we say male... M-A-L-E, it encompasses man, which encompasses male and female. So both, both that in other words, all the, the distinction and the division, a woman has a role and she needs to be in her place, a man has a role in his place. Yes, we do and we don't. Okay? Um, in the Holy Spirit, there is no male and no female. As far as everybody, everybody has to have a head. Without a, without a head, you got monks running around. And if that head is being led by Christ, you don't have no problem. It's when them heads that we marry and attach ourselves to are not being led by the Lord, then you got to listen to their head, which is God. But you got to make sure you're listening to him and not run and doing our thing. So um, I thank God. I thank God for you. I thank God for this time with you, Sister Rita. But the husband is waiting for me to get to take him driving around because he can't drive right now. He had hip surgery. and So I got to drive and he got to work and I got to drive and I don't like driving. Mm. But I'm his helper. I'm his helper. I am capable. So it's like, okay, Lord, right now, at this point in our life, you need me to help my husband. The way for me to help my husband is to be his Uber-er to drive him around. 
So I thank God that I can. Yes, ma'am. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you for that. So you pray for me, Sister Rita, and I'll pray for you. And I try to come on here every day, noonish, between 12 and 1 is what I try. I'm not always able. Um, like on Thursdays and Fridays, my husband has a little job that he just started a couple weeks ago. And we are out. I'm driving him to um, different locations, T-Mobile stores. He goes in and manages and does something. You have to go in every 30 minutes. So we go to like eight stores on Thursday and four stores on Friday. And I have to drive him to all them different stores, okay? And then on Friday, I go, we go to another city. We spend the weekend, and he does another little part-time gig. At our age, it's hard to get permanent jobs. They will use you your skills, your talents, your abilities, but they're not going to hire you full time. So it's challenging, but, but I thank God we, we it helps meet, meet the ends, help the ends get met. So I thank God for that. Oh, 12 p.m. Yes, yeah. to be faithful to that time. To be faithful, to be focused to that time. But God is so awesome if we just be faithful to the small things Yes, ma'am, it's very difficult, very challenging. But if we just be faithful to the little things that God asks us to do, oh, my God, how much protection. Let me just give you a quick testimony. I've been, I got my title from 7-Minute Prayer, SEV 7-Minute um, Prayer here on Periscope, uh, Prophet Albert in Ghana, Africa. He's a praying machine. He's a prayer warrior. And every day, he's called Prayer Mantle. I don't know if you're familiar with his Prayer Mantle family. He prays every day my time about 2, 3 a.m. I'm asleep. So when I get up in the morning, first thing I do is I go and I click him on. And we, yes, ma'am, Prayer Mantle, Prayer Mantle. Look for um, Prayer Mantle 3 in Periscope. It should come up. Prayer Mantle, and his name is Albert Adio Sarfold, A-D-D-I-O hyphen. S-A-R-F-O, I believe that's how you spell it, but powerful. He does a seven-minute read, but sometimes what he does is just minister scriptures. He'll give us scriptures, or he'll prophetically speak of what's happening or what's going to happen uh, during that um, uh, big the killing in Florida at the, at the gay bar or whatever. Prior to that, he was telling us to pray for our children. He said, pray, you guys pray, God has God given me a thing, just pray for our children. But anyway, what I was going to say to you was this. Way back when I started, he started in December. That's when I started periscoping around December. And he came on and started, God had him to come on and do the seven-minute prayer. Well, during this transitional time, as I began to come on periscope, God had me to begin to intercede on behalf of these different people on periscope. And currently, I have two pages of names. And every day, pretty much every day, I call them out name by name. I call my children and start with them, and I call out the names. And if I'm led to pray something special over them, and I do, and I just go through these names. So I'm saying, and, and he was telling us to pray for our children. Started doing that. Don't make no sense to me. Matter of fact, it's kind of silly. But God has me do it, so it's okay. I'm doing it, okay? Because a lot of things God asks us to do are silly. My baby, the one I was just telling you about, her kids, all the, the, the baby grandchildren, her, her husband, my... Uh, oldest granddaughter and my so it would have been it would have been my four bottom grandchildren would have been drowned is what I'm ready to tell you her her husband and the four um, grandchildren went to the lake got in this boat to um, enjoy the camping trip on that weekend and then one of them kind of flat bedded boats and on the front of it you're not supposed to stand but the son-in-law clowning around, having a good time. He went out there and he's dancing, bobbing on the boat. And he did one dip. And they said that boat water came on it. And they heard the boat submerge. And they said it went go and started going under the water. But God, but God. So they said they all. He ran to the back. The rest of them kind of hurriedly ran to the back of this boat. And it came up. So water was all in it, but it righted itself as the water went out. I could have lost all my, my, my babies in that one time. But because we were praying. But because we prayed. But because we prayed. So, I said, okay, God, I'm going to keep on praying and calling out names. So I'm going to keep on praying and I'm going to keep on calling out that names because God has sustained and continues to take care of my, my babies and my children and my great children. And then I just, 
I'm a nurturer. I have my own, mm -hmm. all these, see, all these mm -hmm. kids bring other kids. And so they call me mama. And so I'm mama Pam. I'm granny Pam. I'm just a nurturer. I I'm, mother I'm people whether they want it or not. <laughs> and actually, I haven't had anyone say no. Yes, I did. I had, some, I had one sister tell me, I don't need no mother. I'm like, oh, okay. So I just left it alone. I was absolutely, not a problem. <laughs> I don't need another child either, so now what? <laughs> Rita, I'm having too much fun with you, sweetie. You must come back and join me. Um, and if you want to get a, a personal thing going, you can messenger me on Facebook. If you do Facebook, messenger me. Or um, you can email me. I am a poet. I have a little book I wrote. Never did my book sign or any of that, but I did publish a book. And it's Pam Poet 23. I'm Pam Poet. Pam, that's my, yeah, that's my name. Yes, ma'am. And my uh, email is Pam Poet, P-A-M-P-O-E-T 23, which is my birthday, 23rd July, just past 65. Pam Poet 23 at gmail.com. Pam Poet 23 at gmail.com. Put the, excuse me, put the Pam and the Poet together. Pampoet23 at gmail.com. And I'd love to talk with you and chat with you um, on there. Okay. God bless you, Sister Rita. It's been my pleasure. And you're just a beautiful young lady. And thank you for chatting with me. I appreciate it. I love, I love to chat. Can you tell? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, as I leave here, I just want you to know that Jesus loves you. Mama Pam loves you. Pamela Dobson loves you, and a.k.a. Mother Love loves you, because I love you with the agape kind of love. Have a blessed and wonderful day, and again, thank you for stopping by, Sister Rita. Bye-bye.